What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh1! And today we're back at it to answer more questions from you guys in another For the Greater <laughs> This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. We also have super thanks, so if you guys want to support the channel, hit us up with a super thanks. Uh, you could ask a question and it's a guaranteed answer next episode. If not, if you just want to give us a super thanks to say thanks uh, you can um, also just wanted everybody to know that I really like plays uh, musicals and what was the other thing and wargaming <laughs> anyways let's read the super thanks first this one is by Thamil his question is no question just saying thanks for the great content You're welcome yeah thanks for the support man and this other super thanks is also by Tangy Zizzle he says shit forgot to ask a question Hey, whatever. Keep doing you, guys. I learned so much lore through you. Peace. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Thanks for the support again, man. Um, again, doesn't have to be any questions. Um, just tell us how your day's doing. And, uh, yeah, thank you for that. And now let's get on to the actual questions. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have it? Yes. This one is none other by Angel Warrior. His question is... What happens to the Space Marine chapters and the Space Marines that refuse to turn chaos when the entirety of their chapter turns to chaos? That's a really good question, and it always comes down, or like, when that happens, it's usually the chapter master that turns traitor. Uh, so you do have a lot of battle brothers that are not going to want to betray the Emperor of Mankind and basically betray their oath. Right. It's usually some person in power that has influence over many, and that's how chaos seeps into the chapter. Be it chapter master, librarian, or even the chaplain himself. The one that's supposed to be looking out for this type of stuff is the one that's actually seeping in corruption through the cracks. Yep, and what happens, um, the reality is that they get killed. So yeah. uh, chaos is smart, right? They were able to corrupt these high-ranking officials, or I guess not officials, but like high-ranking members of the chapter. So they're going to be smart enough to like direct that person um, to destroy the loyalists. Yeah. yeah, the best example was when Erebus did this to none other than the freaking Primarch Horus. Uh, corrupting him and then after that what they did is that they made sure to put all of the earth-born space marines or battle brothers terran born terran born sorry <laughs> uh in front like uh, front lines because they knew they were going to die going into um campaigns where attrition was going to be terrible uh and then killing them off that way right so still using them but like killing them off right and you see this perfectly throughout the whole horus heresy at least within the first three books yep. and then you get to the yes van massacre which at that point it's like okay let's not you know hide let's just go out there and massacre our former battle brothers yeah and i mean it sucks it but it happens in like the modern era with like the chapters and stuff um i do or i have seen like some hints of like, because a, cha a chapter is broken down into units, sometimes the captains are supposed to, like, or they kind of get, like, the, the they, they have the insight to be, like, why is my um, company person sending me to, like, company captain or whatever, sending me to this, uh, basically... Uh, Suicide mission or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes they get, like, smart enough to, like, figure out that it's chaos corruption. Sometimes they don't, but it's mm -hmm. all part of the, the mm -hmm. lore and all that. Because the thing is, you got to be really careful about that. Because let's say they're not corrupted by chaos. So now it just looks like you're being, you know, mutinous. Right. You yourself might be the one that they think is corrupted. So you can get court martialed and all this other stuff. So. Yeah, but as far as like for you, if you're writing a fan lore type of uh, thing for your chapter or your homebrew chapter, play with that. That's kind of like, it would be cool, cool to have a corruptive or basically a coup happen mm -hmm. because of a corrupted traitor or something like that within the ranks of your homebrew chapter a uh, good question though the next one comes from the big one how will i know when my booty is sufficiently tough and strong enough to be considered a buns of steel um i think you never know and i think that's part of how you get buns of steel because you just keep trying to improve and better yourself in that area and eventually the gluteus maximus will just become a powerhouse kind of like the mitochondria powerhouse of the cell mm -hmm. uh, also if the holiday season is coming up so what you could do is just get a nutcracker put it in between your butt cheeks and then squeeze and if it cracks then yeah. buns of steel right 
If it doesn't, then... Uh, Keep doing them squats. Yeah. Or push the walnut or whatever you have a little bit deeper and see what happens. Next question. Steve Disipio. How can anybody enjoy putting together Games Workshop models? Games Workshop literally has the worst instructions I've ever seen. That's true, kind of. Yeah, I think for the most part, I think you can kind of get away with the instructions. But once you get into very complex models, such as like Chaos Knights and stuff like that, that's when it's a little Mm wishy-washy. But I think for the most part, you could just use common sense and be like, okay, this socket goes here. This piece connects with that piece. And honestly, like I haven't built a model for uh, our GW model in a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, So like the new Primaris stuff um, are different than the first ones that came out the first ones that came out like you said they were very like intuitive yeah it's like this piece goes with this piece uh and then before that like the old um firstborn marines it didn't really matter like no. they were super super posable you can kind of do whatever uh, i'm assuming that that's how most primaris and new stuff is uh but not always especially with like uh, name characters mm-hmm. um i got the i think it's like one of the mechs for the orcs and I was, and I realized that like you really do need to follow the directions, otherwise they don't like fit yeah. together. Um, but yeah, it's right. fun. I enjoy that. Yeah, especially if you're converting, then you get to like green stuff and like put the to, put together things differently than you normally would. Because um, I know in the old school joints for like the Tau battle suits, they were all like boxy and square and it's like no this this sucks really bad yeah um but once you get like the gist of how something goes then that gives you more freedom to kind of build and create from there yeah and if you're not into that like understand that the within warhammer 40k there's different um what is it called um aspects of the hobby yeah so you have building painting collecting modeling so like if you don't like one doesn't mean that you're going to be completely out of the other just like you can listen to the lore but not be into the tabletop Mm mm-hmm yeah, or you could just find stuff already pre-built in like Craigslist, eBay, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Next question comes from Angel Warrior Twenty Eight again. Again, what is the most commonly accepted theory about the lost Primarchs and Legions? The basic one is that um, they're lost and uh, damned. So right. like they died and they were eradicated by the Emperor for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. That's com- that, that's the basic. Right. At least that's what the Imperium wants you to know. Yeah. And that's at the very most because they want it to be like purged from history. So like that's almost like they never happened. But if you do find out about them, you at least know that they're gone. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, though, because like I think that they want you to know that they're gone, but they also want you like the, the plinth is still there. Right. They're trying to show like, hey, like if the emperor is willing to kill his own sons, guess what he's going to do to you? Mm-hmm. So then sometimes like. Now I just came up with another theory. Is like, what if there was never any lost Primarchs? And, like, they're just there as a placeholder to show the wrath of the Emperor. Kind of like when we consider Goth, God, like, if you ever... Because we went through, like, uh, what is it called? Communion or whatever? Or no. Yeah, church school. Yeah, church school. Mm-hmm. And they taught us that, like, one aspect of God is fear or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had Lucifer, which was, like, the number one angel. And look what happened to him. Yeah. became the number one devil. And that might be what the, uh, the Ecclesiarchy or the Imperial Creed or the Emperor was trying to do to showcase that, like, I will beat your ass if, you're, <laughs> if you don't fall in line. Yeah. And we've seen that Malkador is able to, like, implant memories and take away memories from the Primarchs. So while we were reading a book that said that, you know, he took away the Primarchs' knowledge of the lost Primarchs, maybe that was actually a memory that he implanted into them. Yeah. Yeah. All, all theories could be right, could be wrong. Who knows? And then last question, what do you have? This one is by uh, Fo Hugh. I believe that's how you pronounce it. If there were to be a Comedy Central roast of a Primarch, with the other Primarchs all being there, and the comedian could say whatever they wanted, which Primarch would you want to see getting roasted? Um, I think the one that would have the most... Uh, to roast would be Horace, yeah, because he failed. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say either Horace or um, Magnus. Magnus, yep. Yeah, because I mean he did nothing wrong. He's I, just yeah. trying to defend himself. Magnus would be a little bit better because at least like Horace was obliterated. <laughs> uh, Magnus is still around, and then he like people could just point out the fact that like like you fucked up big mm-hmm. time. Like, well, kind of. Yeah, he did nothing wrong. <laughs> I 
I don't know. I guess Lorgar would be up there too, because he was already the punching bag for a lot of the beginning parts of the Horace Heresy. Horace Heresy. Yeah. But those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for the super thanks. And we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. That's right. Keep them coming, guys. And as always, it's been the Sound Alchemist. Gersh one. And we are out. Put my freedom first in any situation.